What's the most common mistake you see people make over and over? I think the most common, I mean, this is a very tough question because it's so contextual, right? It, it really depends on the context. Um, I think the most common mistake, if I look at out there in, on planet Earth, like for humanity, is the idea or the belief that you're going to be made happy because of some external circumstance. Uh, and, I, and I know that's not original, that's not new, that's fundamental Buddhist wisdom, so I'm not taking credit for it. But I think I really just recognize it on a fundamental level, including in myself. Like we just bought a new car, we have a baby, so we need a safer car. We were driving a little Mini Cooper before, not enough room in there. Um, so we bought a new car and now I'm waiting for the new car to arrive. And of course, every night I'm on the forums reading about the car. Why am I doing that? It's a silly object, a silly car. It's not going to change my life that much or, or at all. And I know that the instant the car arrives, I won't care about it anymore. Yeah. Um, but what it is, is I, I'm, I'm addicted to the desiring. I'm addicted, I'm addicted to the idea that this external thing is going to bring me some kind of happiness and joy. And that's just completely delusional. Um, so I think just looking outside for anything, I think, is the, is the fundamental delusion. Uh, I, I, which is not to say you shouldn't do things on the outside. You absolutely should. You're a, you're a living creature. Uh, you, you know, there are things that you do. You locally reverse entropy. That's why you're here. You're meant to do something. You're not just meant to lie there in the sand and meditate all day long. So you should self-actualize and you should do what you're meant to do. But the idea that you're going to change something in the outside world, and that is going to bring you the peace and everlasting joy and the happiness that you deserve. That is a fundamental delusion that we all suffer from, including me. And so the mistake over and over and over is to say, oh, I'll be happy when I get that thing, whatever that is. That's the fundamental mistake that we all make, including me, 24-7, all day long. I definitely see myself in that answer. <laughs> because, uh, you're, because you're human. You're yeah. human. All of us do it. What does freedom mean to you? Freedom is freedom from the mind. The only reason that any human being is not free is because of his mind. It is the mind which creates his tortures. It is the mind which creates his anxieties. It is the mind which creates his conflicts. It is the mind which creates his rules. All that he is confined by, all that he is imprisoned by, is the mind, not anything else. When I was young, I wanted freedom, but I wanted freedom in the sense of I didn't want to be trapped in the house. I wanted to be able to live where I wanted. I wanted to be able to make money. I wanted to have a girlfriend. I wanted to go to a place where I could do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. That's what I wanted. In my mind, freedom was just getting away from physical constraints and material constraints. I got all that stuff. I traveled the whole world. I ate all the food. I made all the money. I got all the things that I wanted in life. Yet the quality of my life did not change that much. The quality of my moment to moment experience didn't change that much. That's because I hadn't changed that much. My internal experience was still very much the same. Every time I got something, I wanted the next thing and wanted the next thing and wanted the next thing. All the same pains and tortures and miseries were still there. Maybe some were better. Obviously, it's better to be rich than to be poor. It's better to be healthy than to be sick. But beyond a certain point, my baseline level of peace had not changed that much. Then I started making the transition to what you're talking about, realizing that a lot of these traps were in my mind. But you've just jumped all the way. You're saying, no, it's all from the mind from the very beginning. Yes, any freedom that leads to the desire for more freedom is not freedom. If there's a bleed, you don't clean the tributary vessels. You want to look at the source of the bleed. Even if it took someone 30 years to learn the source of the bleed, to learn the truth about what freedom really was, it would be far more effective to begin that journey at this very second, as opposed to doing it piecemeal, because that'll take 900 years. It is not abstract to say that freedom comes from the mind. What it is is revelatory. The belief is that anxiety and fears and pain arise from circumstance, that they arise from other people. As long as that belief is invested inside of someone, he will spend his life trying to change circumstance. And that will be a monumental waste of life, and you only get one. So quite frankly, there isn't enough time to go piecemeal. It is far better to not understand than it is to go piecemeal. Because then you're going down a tributary, and that tributary leads to other tributaries. Very soon, you're way off course. What we're really talking about here is that 
all of the problems that we struggle with, we tend to externalize. We tend to solve them in the external world. And there are certain ones that are practical in the external world. Do I have food? Do I have shelter? Those kinds of things. But beyond a certain basic level, a lot of the problems we're trying to solve in the external world are actually internal problems. And even if we manage to solve the current manifestation in the external world, the new problem will just pop up tomorrow in the external world. 